this it with an hour in a minute. Okay. David spends a fifth of his money on a CD. And he spends a third of his money on a shirt. What fraction of his money does he have left? So what we need to do is to find out what fraction he spent. What fraction he spent. And then what fraction is left. So what we've got to do is to add these two fractions together. He spent a fifth of his money on a CD. A third of his money on a shirt. So all together he spent a fifth plus a third of his money. So the first thing we've got to do is to add these two fractions together. Now this is the third time on this exam paper that we've had to do making the bottom number the same. Because if you put fractions in order of size, or you add them, or you subtract them, one way of doing it is to get the bottom numbers the same, the lowest common denominator. The lowest number that 5 and 3 go into is 15. So one-fifth is the same as something fifteenths. One-third is the same as something fifteenths. Look at the bottom number. Three fives are fifteen. Look at the top number. Three ones are three. Look at the bottom number. Five threes are fifteen. Five ones are five. One-fifth is the same fraction as three fifteenths. One third is the same fraction as five fifteenths. So if we add those two together, don't be silly and add the bottom numbers together. Don't have a thirty there. Three fifteenths and five fifteenths is eight fifteenths. Now, if he spends eight fifteenths, there are seven fifteenths that he didn't spend. Are you happy with this? 8 fifteenths must be 7 fifteenths left over. That's how much he had left. So let's see what sort of marks we're going to get for this question. Three marks. One mark for appreciating the need to have the lowest common denominator showing you working out. One mark for getting the 8 fifteenths, and one mark for getting the 7 fifteenths as the answer. Moving on to number 10. Work out the size of the angle, and give the reason for your answer. It does also say on the original paper, if you look at it, that S... T, U is a straight line. I know it looks like it, but we can only know that it is if we're told. So looking at S, T, U as a straight line, that angle is 180 degrees. So in other words, angle A is 180, take away 64. Now again, it's a non-calculator paper, so doing this messing about that you learned a long time ago called borrowing is a very good idea so you don't go and get an easy question wrong. You don't have to do the 180 take away 64 in your head. Write it down, work it out. That's A part one. Now give the reason for your answer. Now some people are going to get this wrong. Because what they're going to do is they're going to write the answer to part A. I'll actually show you what I mean. I think I've got a piece of paper here. Let's, let's show you what some people will do. This is what they'll do. Part A, they'll work it out in their heads. And then part A2, their reason will be, then they'll write that down. I took away 64 from 180. They might even put that in a sentence. I took away 64 from 180. Now that is not a reason. That's your working out. And a lot of people do lose marks for the type of question, give a reason. And their reason is what they did for working out. The reason is quite simple.
because a straight line is 180 degrees or 180 degrees on a straight line a straight line is 180 degrees you can put it different ways but as long as you write it in a sentence and you show the examiner you appreciate a straight line is always 180 degrees that's your reason let's look at part B now the same thing applies here a lot of people will look at this they'll see these two lines are equal that's what the dashes mean that line equals that line they appreciate that this is a isosceles triangle and if you have an isosceles triangle then these two angles will be the same so that will be 64 and in their heads they do 64 and 64 is 128 and in their heads they do 128 taken away from 180 and they write the answer down quite rightly as 52 and then for part 2 give the reason they then proceed to write down something like this and that's it and they'll get a big fat no marks at all for that that is not the reasoning that is the how you work out the, far, the actual answer so in fact that's still part one that's what you should do instead of doing it in your head now you won't lose any marks if you do it in your head and get it right but you'll lose marks if you do it in your head and get it wrong so don't do it in your head the reason is what I said when I was explaining it because these two lines are equal is an isosceles triangle therefore the base angles are equal and because the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees I can take away the base angles to get the missing angle now how do you write all that down? Now quite honestly if the examiner sees this word isosceles somewhere in your explanation and also add up to 180 degrees somewhere in your explanation you'll get your marks. It needs to be something like this because two sides are the same, it's an isosceles triangle, and the base angles are the same, and any triangle adds up to 180 degrees, something like that. But as long as the examiner can see the main points of the explanation and the reason, give a reason is not the working out. Give a reason is the reason for doing your working out. It's an isosceles triangle because the two sides are equal. Anyway, why am I repeating myself when you can stop it and spin it back and listen again? Let's see what the marks are here. Quite neatly, one mark for the answer and one mark for the reason. Now this one, one mark for the answer, and I think they should have given two marks for the reasons, but they haven't. They've only given one mark, which is a bit tight. But there you go. That's question 10.